PGA Tour Champions Learning Center. Brought to you by Tour Edge Exotics. Hello and welcome to Learning Center. I'm Vince Cellini. Hope you are safe and well. And we have a very special guest with us. He's a seven-time winner on the PGA Tour, two-time U.S. Open champion, the defending champion at the Bridgestone Senior Players, and oh, by the way, he is a World Golf Hall of Fame member. Mr. Retief Goosen is with us. Hi, Retief. How are you? Vince, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very well. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to getting back out on the golf course. Eh? And I'm looking forward to seeing you out there. <laughs> I have to tell you, my last guest was Fred Funk, who may be the polar opposite of you, Retief, in terms of what? personality <laughs> and energy. <laughs> but I, I wonder how your, uh, your sort of mellow, controlled demeanor, how much has that helped you? In your career? Well, I think you should see me after a few glasses of wine. I, I, I do cheer up quite a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think Fred is just on a glass of wine all the time, so maybe that's uh, why he's like that. But uh, uh, no, I, I, I get going a little bit after a few glasses, and uh, once I get into the conversation, it's good. But uh, once I get out on the golf course, you know, it's all business and uh, uh, get down to playing some golf. All right, we're going to have to share some wine sometime. Okay, we'll do that. Sounds like a plan. All right. Uh, I was wondering what you've been up to during this uh, this time off, um, I, and I'm glad to see that you've you've kept the the quarantine beard, which looks very handsome, <laughs> by the way. Well, I, I I tell you, you should have seen me a little while ago uh, when I didn't shave for about three months. Um, I, I looked like a grizzly bear, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, you know, when, when was the last time I played? It was the first round at uh, in Sawgrass. Yeah, so it later. was quite a, um, uh, uh, it's been a while, really, since competitive golf. And, um, you know, I, I took about three months away from the game. I uh, put my clubs away for literally nearly three months. And, um, you know, I'm somebody that like to keep busy at home with fixing things, painting doing that I'm a bit of a handyman and a bit of a mechanic myself so I ended up buying myself a very old Hummer and uh, I spent three months renovating it so how old, uh, how old? well it's a 2006 uh, uh, H2 and um, okay. yeah I pretty much stripped the whole thing and put it back together and um, it's uh, I love it it's a great car to drive and uh, you know you you're in command of the road. Get out of my way. That sort of kind of car, you know. Yeah, I, I could see you uh, tooling around I-4, up and down I-4 in, the, <laughs> in that one. That has to be a, a real sight. Um, uh, what about your focus on fitness? You're always in good shape. Uh, can you share with us what you've been doing to stay, stay game ready? You know, as a youngster, I played a lot of sports, uh, rugby, tennis, cricket, golf, really only got serious with golf from around the age of 12, 13. But before that, I played many other sports. Um, and then obviously I was hit by lightning as a junior uh, on the golf course and uh, lucky to walk away from that one. And, uh, you know, uh, one, of, one of the doctors said to me, I, I picked up a crack in my heartbeat and I need to, you know, stay fit and exercise to build up the this, this strength in the heart as well. And, um, uh, and so I really basically started working out in a gym, kept my fitness up, uh, finished school, and then the two year military service. And, uh, so there you run around a little bit too. And, uh, but it also teaches you discipline. Um, and really literally after the military, I turned pro and, uh, here we are 30 years latest, uh, <laughs> time to do, do fly though. You know, it's amazing. This is a career that almost wasn't with the lightning strike. I mean, how often do you reflect on that? How fortunate you are to work your way through that and, and be talking to me here today? Well, obviously, yeah, whenever you walk away from an accident like that or, or any, any other uh, life-threatening accident, um, you, you're lucky to be around. You know, I could be somewhere, somewhere in the ground somewhere now and uh, uh, chipping out of bunkers the whole time. But, uh, <laughs> Um, it is uh, it is lucky that I'm, I'm I'm around. Obviously, whenever in something like that to to be around and uh, yeah, the career has really changed since then. And uh, I got going uh, early on. Uh, probably you know uh, my first full European tour event was in Dubai 
and uh, Wayne Weston actually won the event and I finished second. So uh, my career got off to a good start very early on and and here we are so many years later. Right. But, um, you know, uh, I, you know, as a, as a golfer, I've always liked to stay fit uh, in a way. Uh, I mean, I don't go and run 20 miles every day on top of walking 10 miles every day and hitting balls, stuff like that. Uh, you, you know, you, you got to listen to your body a little bit too in golf and uh, make sure to uh, uh, pace yourself a little bit too because recovery is also a very important part about the, uh, uh, any sport, you know, to get your muscles all uh, relaxed and, and, and fit again for the following day. Um, so I, I mostly stick with walking. I, I try to stay away from running. I mean, I've had the bad back as well. I've had, had back surgery now, um, you know, seven, eight years ago now. I can't believe how long it is, seven years, yeah. And uh, luckily that's been a success. And so I try and protect that as much as possible on every other joint <laughs> in your body as you get older, you know, the aches and pains do suddenly arrive. And um, uh, so I do keep fit by going to the gym pretty much every day. Um, do some exercises to strengthen, mainly for golf. Year and day, I do some strength exercises. And uh, the most important thing I focus on is stretching. Try and stay as flexible as you can. Um, my golf swing is getting shorter and shorter every year. And, uh, you know, if you, the more I can get that rotation back a little bit, uh, uh, obviously, the further you'll hit the ball. And that's something I have concentrated quite a bit on in the last month, um, is getting my flexibility back quite a lot. I've stretched a lot and, and trying to gain, gain a few yards. Well, you still get it out there pretty good. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But on the subject of fitness and body changes, um, I'd like to get your thoughts on Bryson DeChambeau, who has really been the talk of the game, uh, packing on like 40 to 45 pounds, but yet staying flexible enough and the way he's driving the ball and finally winning at the Rocket Mortgage Classic uh, in Detroit mm. and averaging 350 uh, off the tee, uh, Retief. I, I wanted to get your thoughts not only – on Bryson, what we just saw, but but where he can take this? Well, it's great to see. You know, um, uh, you know, he's, he's starting to show that consistency week in and week out. He's up there in the top five, and it's just a matter of time that he he could go into the league of what Tiger was. You know, winning eight mm -hmm. times a season or something like that. Yeah, wow. um, he's he. I think the guy's got the right mind for the game. Um, Sometimes overthinking is also not good for golf, but, uh, you know, he's motivated and and he's got everything worked out at the moment. And, yeah, I mean, at that age, I suppose it's quite easy to bulk up so quickly and, uh, you know, better work out than the muscle is there. But uh, as you get older, it seems to thin out. But um, um, it's great to see, you know, Bryson is a nice guy and he um, – he, he works hard, obviously, at it, and it's his life, and he loves it, and he loves getting out there and, and always get behind the science of everything. And, but as we know, in this game, the mind is, it has to be strong, and uh, I think that's uh, one of his strongest bits is his mind. Well, he's faced his share of criticism, but certainly answered all of those critics, and he is on his own path, and it's been very successful, uh, as you said, probably uh, far beyond. So we're about three weeks away from uh, the scheduled PGA Tour champions return at the, the Ally Challenge in Michigan. And I'm wondering, uh, Retief, you talked about keeping your swing, trying to keep it not so short. But what are the other aspects of your game that you're, you're trying to keep sharp so that you're ready to go once we hit the ground? Well, uh, you know, Champions Tour, it's, it's about shooting low scores. I mean, you got to go out there and kick off with six, seven under in the first round very quickly. Otherwise, you get left behind um you know yeah gaining t gaining a uh, distance off the tee is one thing but now you got shorter irons in your hand you sure. you need to hit it close um so yeah i have been working a little bit more on my short irons and uh and and wedges trying to get my distance controls a little better and um um yeah if, if you can hit it close and make the pass you can score but uh uh, yeah, it is. It is a lot easier to go into a green with a wedge uh, than a seven iron uh, out the rough, even. You know, so uh, it, it. You know, it's the way the game's going. We can see with Bryson now. You know, the equipment's staying the same, but the guys are hitting it further. Golf has become a 
very athletic sport and the guys are, are, are working out and especially for golf. They're not just bulking up for just to bulk up, but the exercise that they do is very much golf orientated to create more speed. You know, it's interesting too. I can remember because I'm older than you when they would say, do not lift weights for golf. Do not lift weights for baseball. It was like forbidden. It was going to ruin your swing. And now we see how heavily it's incorporated uh, into today's game. Um, as far as scheduling is concerned, you had discussed, I believe on a podcast, the possibility of bringing a PGA Tour Champions event to to Isleworth uh, in, in Orlando there. Um, what, where does that stand? What was, the, what was the genesis of that idea? Well, uh, my, my sponsor, Mitsubishi, uh, 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 Itachi Power Systems, they uh, uh, um, has been a great supporter of, of, uh, of me in the last couple of years. And uh, Paul Browning, you know, is a keen golfer and he, he and the people he deals with a lot are sort of our age kind of people and the business and the industry is in. And uh, it feels like getting involved with a champions tour can really benefit the company. And um, hopefully uh, that can happen. Um, this year, I think it's not obviously not going to happen. I mean, we're so stocked up now till the end of the year. Sure. Um, but hopefully with the virus and all of that stuff, might be next year a little bit better. We can maybe squeeze in I event uh, definitely on, on the schedule, which would be nice and, and great for a champions tour. Wow. So you think there's, if I hear you correct, you're talking about 2021 possibly having this event take place. Yes. Well, yeah, I, okay. I would hope so. Obviously I'll, I'll pull his leg and say, come on, Paul, uh, <laughs> get going. And, uh, um, let's let's do this. Um, but he's a very keen golfer, and, and he likes golf, and he likes the Champions Tour. Um, so uh, uh, we'll we'll keep discussing. Uh, venue is still really up in the air, but uh, he, he is keen to, I think, to do something in the way of of putting on a event. Well, that would be terrific. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, Retief, this week was supposed to be the Bridgestone Senior Players Championship rescheduled. Uh, to begin in August 13th. Uh, the venue is historic Firestone Country Club, and it, uh, it was the longest on tour last year at 7,400 yards. And it actually uh, played to an average of uh, nearly three over par stroke average there. But mm. you, you finished at 600 and you had a two shot win. How excited are you to get back there? And what are some of the things that allowed you to be successful and perhaps successful again as you, uh, as you go back to defend? Yeah, you know, for some reason, I do like the tougher golf courses. Um, I seem to win all my tournaments pretty much on golf courses that you have to grind for pass, pass a good score. Um, I've never been somebody that really go and shoot 20 under very easy around a tournament. I, I like winning score around 10 or, or less. And uh, um, and Akron just played like that last year. It was uh, It's one of the great golf courses in the world, and it's – it's tough. It played tough that week. It's firm. They played it long, just like almost the distance they play it for for um, for the regular guys, except a couple of holes they played us a little forward. But otherwise, the course showed its teeth. And uh, very excited to go back there and play. Um, uh, in a way, I'm glad they moved it a week later. It just sort of gives me a week to get back into the swing of it again and before I go out there and, and play. But I'm very much looking forward to the Ally as well. I mean, it's another great golf course. Uh, golf course that many PGA Tour events have been played on. So I'm looking forward to getting out there too. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you out there. So let's get to our, our segment, What's Your Edge, presented by Tour Edge Exotics. I mentioned your distance off the tee. You're averaging 298 yards off the tee, which is second on PGA Tour champions. So seeing Bryson every week and seeing the, you know, the young guys on PGA tour, everyone wants to hit the ball farther. How, how do you go about that? What would you tell our viewers, the amateurs about trying to just get some more distance out there and, you know, get out there and muscle up a little bit off the tee? Well, I mean, uh, as I say, golf is, is, is about uh, flexibility and timing. Um, you know, you could be the strongest man in the world. You're not going to hit it 300 yards if you can't swing the club <laughs> with speed uh, and, and timing. Um, timing is a very much a very important thing with like Bryce and he's, he's, he's gained strength uh, in his whole body, but he's also gained 
his timing, I think, is just seems to be that much better. He, he is always a very stiff uh, swinger, which is great for the short clubs. But in longer clubs, you do need that little bit of lag. And he has found a way to just create that little bit of lag now with uh, 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 the longer driver, maybe a heavier driver, um, uh, just to get that little bit of lag on the backswing and create that little bit of speed. But he's, he's learned to to move his hips very quickly around um, and, and help that. Uh, so his core is really strengthened up. And, and for, you know, for the most time, as I said before, for, for the older guys to just get that little bit more strength is you got to get the hips rotating. Yeah. The hips got to rotate more. Um, and that comes with flexibility. Just do a little bit of fl- stretching for 20 minutes before you go out to, to play instead of just arriving at a course, start hitting away, you know. Uh, um, but, but on top of that, you need to find the right equipment, you know. Go to your local pro, get the right clubs, get the right launch angle and spin uh, uh, in the bag too to give yourself that little bit of edge uh, on flight and, and, and carry. And, uh, and you've got to hit the ball out of the middle of the club face. You know, if you don't hit it out of the middle of the club face, it, it's not going to go anywhere. So consistent striking out of the middle also gives you that distance. Yeah, that's what separates you guys from, you know, the mere mortals uh, here <laughs> at home. Um, you talked about playing well on tough courses, and, and that's evident because of your U.S. Open victories. And uh, uh, the U.S. Open is now scheduled for September 17th at Wingfoot and also on NBC now. Uh, you won a U.S. Open in New York State in 2004 at Shinnecock Hills, winning at four under par. And, and Retief, that's really amazing. For those who don't remember, the Sunday conditions there, it was dry and breezy, and the, the greens were just unbelievably fast. And I, you shoot 71, it's par 70. The final round scoring average was 78.7 on Sunday. That back nine performance, I, I think, is one of the great <laughs> performances I've ever seen in a major I've ever witnessed. What are your recollections of that particular event? You know, I got there on a Monday with my first practice round, uh, started hitting balls, uh, chipping around a chipping green there, and just the, the, the feel of the golf course, I loved it immediately. The way it was set up, and of course, just played beautifully till Saturday morning when we woke up, and suddenly we were on a different planet. The golf course just dried out, uh, the wind picked up, uh, it was... Uh, Suddenly, yeah, 80 was a good score almost. You know, it, it's amazing how uh, quickly a golf course could change. And it happened again um, uh, this this year. You know, guys literally hitting the ball on the on the walk, trying to keep it on the greens and putting it off the greens. And, you know, that golf course just seems to be uh, one of the golf courses that um, uh, is one of the hardest in the world if you, if you get just – the right weather for it and uh, yeah for me that week obviously putting is 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 key uh, but I love the way the course the way I felt the whole whole week on the golf course um, and then yeah Sunday I, I got it up and down how many times and uh, uh, and that's how you win tournaments generally the guy that wins every week is number one or two in putting and um, you know, I, I just seem to love those really fast, hard greens. I, I just see my pace is better. I, I rather put on fast greens than slow greens. All righty. Yeah, Vince, I, I thought I'd give the guys a little bit of a, a, a tip on putting, how to move the shoulders a little bit. A, a lot of amateurs I play with, I noticed that the shoulder movement is a little bit too much around their body. And what I mean by that is if, uh, if they... Uh, if, if, if you can see me from here, when they putt, the shoulders are moving a little bit around the body. So yes. that really creates the putter head to move a little bit too much in, inside the plane. Uh, so I think a, a good little tip is just take an alignment stick, put it under your arms, and now try to imagine that that point and this point, you move it straight down and up. So this, that point is going to go straight down. And this one is going to go straight down. It's not really moving around the body. So the more I can tilt it down and down, then you 
take your putter back a little bit more on, on plane. So you can see from behind here, if I'm going around, you see how you're moving around the stake. Mm -hmm. But the lineman sticks, so you've got to try and imagine it's going down and down. And that way you get the putter to move a lot better on plane and a lot easier to keep it on plane. So just take a lineman stick, put it around your arms there and just feel like you're pushing down, the shoulder down, this one down. And that creates a nice straight back and straight through putting stroke. Hopefully that will help you guys making a little bit more consistent putts. Uh, as we said, at the end of the month, uh, we're going to get back to it on PGA Tour Champions. Uh, schedule two, uh, first 11 events, 11 events in 15 weeks. Um, I'm wondering how you're going to approach all of this, particularly with the rollover for the Charles Schwab Cup into 2021 and uh, kind of what you're expecting. We found out on Monday that the Memorial Tournament, which was going to have fans, upwards of 8,000, will now not have fans uh, present uh, for Jack Nicholas's event. So I would imagine there's, it's, it's difficult enough to play the game, but then you're concerned about all of the things that are going on around you, given the times we live in, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, um, it's a strange year in a way. In a way, you almost want to say, well, why don't we just cancel the whole year and start next year? But, <laughs> you know, we could, we could be in the same boat next year. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, is, uh, it reminds me maybe of some of the uh, smaller European tour events we used to play in the old days. You know, all week there was maybe 50 people <laughs> that came and watched. Um, um, so it's it's going to be a rather funny funny feeling uh, teeing it up now uh, in the next few weeks and not have any crowds. Um, um, but and and in the same time, you know, it doesn't change the game. You're still going to be nervous. You still have to hit the shots and and uh, come come down the last few holes on on Sunday. The pressure is there, with or without crowds. Um, I mean, for us. We're playing week in and week out in front of crowds. We're actually trying to block out the crowds. We're trying to imagine that there isn't any crowds and you just play and get in a zone and all it's golf ball and, and the golf course. Uh, so uh, that's almost now what it, what it really looks like. Mm -hmm. your, then what we're trying to do when regular events was on with crowds, just trying to block out the crowds. Well, Retief, it came down uh, last year for the Charles Schwab Cup to the Maggard Miracle. So uh, we fully expect that you'll be, uh, <laughs> you'll be in the mix again <laughs> after what happened last year. I'm sure you have some unfinished business that uh, you want to take care of. I, I hope so. Um, last year, you know, I got off to a slow start. Uh, I broke a finger and I was out for about two months or so. And, uh, uh, and then things really kicked off in the second half of the year. And this year now we got this, so hopefully... Uh, I can get going, but it's, you know, it is, it is, it's great to see Ernie has got off to a great start too this year and, um, and he's fully committed to the champions too. It's a great addition and to promote uh, the champions. And uh, so I hope uh, in the next uh, few weeks, I can maybe put in a win quickly and move up that Charles Schwab Cup standings. Right. That, that, that could very well happen. Retief Goosen, thank you so much for the time. And it's great seeing you. I can't wait to see you out there and uh, getting back to business. Thank you. Thank you.